I can do it, Pierce. I know I can do it. I can get it out. I reckon I can get it on the green here. I just know I can. Hmm. Maybe not. Well, that was never going to happen, was it? Hi, it's me and my golf here. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy. It's time for the Impact Show. We're talking about three mistakes golfers make on the golf course. Let's take charge of your game. I'm still in the rough, by the way. Thanks for joining us on the first hole at the Asprey. Now, July is all about break 90. That is the theme of our month at meandmygolf.com. And we have got another coaching plan coming for you, break 90, which will be released in a couple of weeks. Andy, cannot wait for it, it's super exciting. Yeah, do you know what? The break 100 was fantastic. This one is the next step where you guys, if you've already broke 100, which a lot of you have, break 90 is gonna get you past that 90 mark. And it's a great great program that we worked on. Yeah, absolutely. You'll definitely, it's definitely gonna help you. Even if you're trying to break 80, it can actually help you as well. So look, Andy, we get to play a little bit of golf. Not loads now, again. unfortunately, because of the amount of uh, videos that we create. But when we do play, we're like, oh my goodness, what are they doing there? What are they doing here? What, what, what's that person doing out of there? So this, we see golfers try crazy golf shots and you know they really do pile on the, the scores to that scorecard. So this is a perfect example. We've got three, obviously. This is a perfect example. On the first hole, we've got 190 yards to the flag. We've just missed the fairway. Not a bad tee shot, but the lie doesn't look great. It's on a downhill line. Yeah. You've got to go over a tree with a bunker on the left. Rescue, isn't it? Yeah, it's not on the green. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's <laughs> rescue on the green. And I think this is the mistake that a lot of golfers make. Look, they really disregard the lie. They yeah. look at the yardage. It's two, almost 200 yards. Yeah. They go, rescue, okay, I can get it there. Now, the problem is, and this is what the key thing is about breaking 90, if you're in a little bit of danger, then you need to get out of danger. Get yourself back in play and minimise the score. So get rid of these double bogeys, and a bogey is absolutely fine. So the majority of people would pick out the rescue because of the yardage. They would try and hit the golf ball, but the nature of the lie will not allow them to make a good contact. They leave it in the rough, and they're, saying they're left with the same situation. Yeah, so right. the score then piles up. Instead of actually looking at this and thinking, well, if I can get it out in play, maybe hitting a, a nine iron onto the fairway, they'll help me get the strike, and then I can wedge it on the green. They're not thinking strategically, Pierce. They're almost sure. thinking, well, they, if I pull off the perfect shot here, <laughs> I can get it there. But look, this golf isn't a game of perfect. It's making sure you can get in a position, and when you are in danger, get it back in play, minimise the score. And look, and so especially, no, if you use that, you're going to get a slap. And especially when you're on the first hole as well. You know, there's just no point in doing that, even at any point, but especially not the first hole. Now, it's if I was a yard here, yeah, there we go. Rescue all day long, nice yeah. lie, no problem. But yeah. I'm not. I'm just miss. I've just miss. So what I'm going to do? Just quickly, sorry. Interesting you say that. Again, I think yes, you, of course you can hit the rescue. But even though when it's the first hole, just think, well, it's okay to start off with a bogey. It's okay to, to hit it down into the fairway and wedge on. So don't yeah. be, don't be, you know, you haven't necessarily got to go for that one. So nine iron, that's what I'm going to do. And the nine iron is going to help me actually get the contact that I need because it's going to be a steeper angle of attack. So I'm going to go middle of the fairway, aiming towards that bunker and really just get it back in play here. So that's the key thing. I'm setting myself up now to give myself a chance of getting it on the green in yeah. three. I've still got a par putt if I can do that, and this is a sensible way to do it. Let's, let's see you do that then. Okay, ball back in the stand, so I'm just gonna sort of punch this out and get it onto the fairway, and like I say, set me up nicely for the next shot. Perfect. And there we go. Good strike, little bit of a divot there. It's gone down left side of the fairway. I've opened up the hole as well from there. Sensible play. Simple. Don't attempt something that you have not practiced before. So we're on the ninth fairway at the Asprey, par five, and his third shot, he's got a tree in the way. Now, if we look at this, Andy, you could probably get one underneath the branches there with a little bit of draw, and you might be able to get it on the green. Yes. That's a pretty hard shot if you've not played it before, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, look, if I can get the perfect shot and start it right, draw it in, I can access the flag. But if you've not practiced it, then you could end up in all sorts of danger. The safe play, if you haven't practiced, would be to look, pitch out, get it in play, so you are left with a shot to the green. But if I can pull the shot off, yeah. then I've got a much better chance of getting it close to the hole and lower my score, which is ultimately what we're looking to do. If we are in this situation, we want to get it as close as we can, and why not pull the shot off if we practiced it? And, and you know what, exactly right. So, you know, when you're playing golf, sorry, when we were discussing this about people playing golf, we, we were thinking of all the scenarios that you could go through, lots of different scenarios about the, uh, trying to play a flop shot to a, to a flag as opposed to chipping onto the green. We thought this was a, a superb one to do because golfers will go, I'm gonna play a low hook here. You asked them afterwards, have you ever played a low hook before? No, 
Okay. So exactly. We know we want to play the low hook, so here's the opportunity. What do we need to do to play a low hook? Well, okay, well, I've practiced this before, so I know exactly what to do, <laughs> luckily. Now, if I'm going to, this is what you can do. If you find yourself in this situation, you've not practiced it, this is what you can do on the range. I want to aim the club face where I want to start the golf ball, which is to the right of this tree. I want to make sure I miss this tree, that's the first thing. Then I want to create the shape, so I'm going to aim my body well to the right, like so, but my club face now is close to my body alignment. Now to get the low shot, I'm going to move the ball back in the stance. Now this is creating that path to the right with a closed club face. All I'm going to do now is swing on the line of my body and that difference between the setup and, my, and the club face is going to create that curve. Okay, Simple So is that then? Club face is pointing to the right of the trees. My body is further right of that. Ball is back. Let's get this one starting out right and then hopefully getting this on the green. And that one is an absolute hit the bank. beauty. Now before we get into our third and final scenario on the golf course, it is question time. So we need you to post down below what situations you struggle with on the golf course. I'm sure there's a few that we haven't actually mentioned today. Yes, post them down below and we will get back to as many as we can and maybe even do a video on one as well. Absolutely, why not, why not? Okay, so the third and final one. Are you an insane golfer? So the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Albert Einstein said that and he was pretty clever. He was a lot right, cleverer than you. So, you know what, it makes sense that we should never do something that we know is not going to work because it hasn't worked before, but as human beings we often do this. Now, think of the examples on the golf course. Slicing the golf ball. You're aiming square or you're trying to play a draw and you're slicing the golf ball. Every single shot is a slice. What's the obvious thing to do? Well, the obvious thing to do is just, just aim left and this is the this is the thing that we don't see. The majority of golfers who would do this, they'd hit a slice first tee, second tee, third tee, and they just think that they are going to all of a sudden magic one on the fairway doing, doing the same thing. Well, look, if you're seeing a pattern of consistent slices, well, aim slightly down the left-hand side of the fairway. It's all about getting the golf ball in play. I mean, that's just one situation. You, you know, if you're constantly leaving your put short on the greens, you know, make sure you're giving yourself and doing something a little different make sure you're having a slightly longer backswing to generate that speed that you need to get it to the hole so identify these patterns and make sure you don't do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result now the 18th here pierce many a time we've filmed on this hole and we've watched golfers play this shot they hit the first shot in the water they get another golf ball out same club they hit another shot in the water and then they hit another shot in the water three times, sometimes more, doing the same shot instead yeah. of actually going, okay, well look, if I can just hit something a little big, I'm going to be dry. So, you know, we see this sort of first hand pierce all the time and this is just one example of it on the tee here. Yeah, and look, you know, it's interesting one with the iron approaches. We've spoken about this a lot, that the majority of iron shots come up short, you know, and how often do you realize that when you're playing? So you have to have this clarity of thought. Of course, we always say focus on one shot at a time, but you need to understand what are the trends when you are playing. Yeah. If you are missing fairways, if you're leaving your putt shorts, if you're leaving your approach shot short, if you're you know, overhitting your chip shots, whatever you are doing, have that clarity to understand what changes you need to do in order to improve your round in round. Yes, definitely. Now look, we've got 155 yards to the flag. The flag's at the front, sorry, to the middle of the green, the flag's at the front, probably playing about 140-ish, but I'm not even gonna flirt with the flag. Bit of breeze into, I'm actually gonna go from my eight iron here up to a seven iron, because I wanna be dry pierced. The yeah. last thing I wanna do is hit it yeah. near those swans. So the, yeah, the thing, yeah, they, they cost you a lot of money if you hit one of those. So look, if you, with that flag there, everybody would look at the flag and go, that's the yardage, that's what I need. You know, look at the bush and all, look at their, their range finder, their GPS, their 18 birdies app, whatever. They'd look at that flag and go, that's the yardage I need to hit it. Where it's absolutely wrong in this situation, it needs to be about 10 yards at least past yeah. it. And they would say, if I can hit that perfect nine iron, I can get there. Well, look, I'm gonna hit the seven iron, a smooth one, middle of the green, not even really flirting with that flag. And like I say, I'm taking the danger out of play there. If you under hit this, you've got to jump in the water. And that one there, a little bit into the breeze now, that is plenty big You know enough. what? The wind would definitely have made that go into the water if you did it less club than I did, because you could see it stalling a little bit there. Safe. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? That was pretty simple. So we hope you enjoyed that, guys. Now, three of the most common things that we see golfers do on golf course there. So make sure you bear those in mind next time you're on the golf course. And if you really enjoyed this uh, episode today of the Impact Show, then hit the like button. It allows us to reach more people and help them play better golf. Absolutely. Now, the Me and My Golf Weekly has just gone live at meandmygolf.com. Very exciting. This is talking about Andy Prowman's top three slice drills. 
So if you want to watch that, click on the link down there. It'll take you straight to meandmygolf.com where you can sign up for free for a 30-day free trial and watch the video, plus many more.